Hallelujah. 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 God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. My name is Prophet Ben Ojenabo, a.k.a. Man of Fire, and by the grace of God, the servants of God, and the founder of Christ Vanya Christian Center, Lagos, Nigeria. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. Your power, your word, your light, your grace, your mercy that is speaking for us, and your goodness and your divine love, your unending love, as at work in our life. Uh, let the light of your word, your wisdom, your truth guide us and guide the children, have impartation in their hearts and their lives, and bring transformation in their life for good and for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will see the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Lord, as I speak your word today, let your word touch lives and use your word to, un, uh, to, to impact lives and to transform lives the word over as a heed and obey your voice and glorify your name in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Today, I want to teach on the mystery of and blessing of the first fruit the mystery and blessing of blessings of the first fruit the mystery and blessings of the first fruit many believers doesn't actually know about the first fruit and many believers doesn't actually know about the mystery of the first fruit and what are the influence it has in the rest of the year our years what has God spoken concerning it? What is the first fruit? What are the first fruits? How does it have to do with our lives, our blessings, our increase, our well-being, our prosperity, our prosperity for the year, our prosperity for the year? How does it have? And what does it have to do? And how does it affect or influences it? Hallelujah. You see, God is a very principal God. Order is the first law of heaven. And God is a very, very principal God. And in all his doings, there are principles and principles and principles. And no matter what you talk about, how people preach about grace, 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 grace is not a, it's not a, a license to sin. I mean, if you look at Romans 6, you see clearly that shall we continue to sin, meaning to disobey God, that grace may abound. The Bible says God forbids, certainly not, God forbid. And so God is a God of principles, and when we follow his commands, that is when the, bound, the, the blessings abound. In Acts chapter 5, verse 32, the word of God says God gives his Holy Spirit to those who obey his commandment, who obey his word. And there are people who don't obey God's word and expect to receive the Holy Spirit. There are people who don't obey God's words and expect to receive bountiful blessings. No. Every blessing that God has pronounced comes from obedience to his word. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, you're going to see there in Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 13 and Deuteronomy 28, you're going to see that blessings are products of obedience to God's word. So is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's a product of obedience to God's word. And you can see that in Acts chapter 5 verse 32. That the Lord God doesn't give his spirit to anyone except those who obey his word. Acts 5 32. And we're talking about, talking about blessings as being products of obedience to God's word. Prosperity increase. Uh, as being product to God's obedience to God's word, you see that one good, good example is you see it in Deuteronomy 28, from verse 1 to 13, and from 14 downwards, you see the other side of it. Now, one of the things that God has spoken concerning the release of heavenly blessings, heavenly dues, the oil of prosperity, the grace to prosper for the year is the first fruits. The first fruits, and when you look at the Bible in in, you look at uh, Matthew 6 38. Jesus Christ said, before he got to uh, Matthew 6 33, before he goes to 33, and from verse 30 downwards, he was talking about our needs, our basic needs, our material needs. And he said, Our Lord God knows that He that, that, that 
we, we have needs of this thing. That these needs are important to us while we're on the earth. Because we may be uh, born of the spirit, but we're still trapped in the body and we live on the earth in the material realm. And so our material bodies have material needs. Being in the material world, we have material needs. And God is 100% aware of this. And, so, and God is always readily available to fix it, to fix it, to help us to meet them. But there are rules we must follow. There are laws we must follow. There are principles we must follow. If we must benefit and receive this heavenly assistance to make things work for us. And that's what our Lord Jesus Christ was saying in Matthew 6, 33, when he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first. In other words, put God first in what you're doing. Put God first in your finances. Put God first in your thoughts. Put God first in your marriage. Put God first in everything you're doing, in your business, anything you're doing. You say, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus Christ. So the first fruit, you can hear the word first fruit. You can hear the word first in the word first fruit. And when you look at Matthew 6, 33, you can hear the word first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, <laughs> we need to put God first in the year, in our finances, if we are to receive financial blessings from God for the year, material blessings from God for the year. We must learn to put God first. And from what? From, from history, the history of the Bible. Right here in the Bible, the history of the Bible. Now, every time, every time there is a new produce, or maybe a new produce, new year, and a new produce and produces, I mean, a new, new, new salaries, new increase that comes to the children of God, they are taught by God through his prophet Moses and, and, and the priests, Aaron, and the rest of them. To put God first according to the laws and statutes and ordinances of God. You must put God first. God gives you a new land. You must give to God from it first. You must thank God. You must appreciate God for it. In fact, what brought the downfall of Cain, causes upon the life of Cain, was because he failed to give God his first fruits. It was first fruits that brought problem, problems in the life of Cain. He refused to give God the, his first fruits. He gave God the crumbs. Why Abel gave God the best of his first fruits? As God gave them the land. Gave God bless, gave them blessings and all that is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when we look at first fruits, we want to take a look at Leviticus uh, 23, verse 10 to 11. Leviticus 23, verse 10 to 11. Now, the first fruits is the best of the first increase money increase that you receive for the year you take the best part it's not first it doesn't mean all of it it's the best part you take a good part the best part of it and then you offer it for god's use for the work of ministry and when you do that you are actually you have put god first in your finances You've registered it in that God has the greatest say, the most important part of your, of your finances for the year. And with doing this, it is established in heaven that this person fears God even in his or her finances. And what he or she has, has been put to use for God's glory. So in Israel, from ancient days past, every new year, every new year, they give God the best of the first fruits, the first produces, their increase, their salaries, what they made, their income, that's the word, the best of their income. They take a, a good chunk of it and they offer it unto God for God's use. And when they do this, they began to prosper. And this is a secret that many Israelis have used in Germany, have used in the U.S. And you see, the U.S. today, many Israelis are there, and they become so successful. You see, Europe, many Israelis are there, they became so successful. In Germany, this is a, this is a secret they used, and they became so, 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 so successful. And because of the success that that they, this their business success, their escapades, their exploits in business, their business success, the, the Germans back then began to envy them. Envy them, began to envy them so badly 
And that was what brought hatred against them. But there are secrets that these people use. And these are the secrets given to them by the divine one, by God, through his servant Moshe. You know, his servant uh, Nabi Moshe, the prophet Moses. And God gave him these instructions. God himself gave him the instruction, the secrets. He released, he gave him the, the secrets. These are the mysteries. He gave him the, the secrets of how to make the year fruitful and prosperous unto you. And one of the principal key is the mystery of the first fruits. And when, if the first fruit is good unto God, is holy, then the rest of it shall be holy. If your first fruit is holy unto God, then the rest of your finances will be holy unto God. That's what the Bible says. So if the first fruit is, is for God's service, for God's glory, then the, yes, the rest of the year will be, will be glorious in your life because God will make it glorious because you took it and used it for the glory of God. And so, in some other churches, they say all, all, the, all the income. But from what I've started and see, it's not all the income, but the best part, the best part of your income for the year. And when you do this, you pull down heavenly stamp of blessings, heavenly blessings. God commands angels of blessings, angels of wealth, angels of divine supply to supply your need abundantly. Even in the year, if the year likes it to be bad, even if the economy is bad in your country, wherever you are on the world, uh, in, uh, uh, on the earth or in the world, because you have done this, it provokes the God of heaven to respond to his word, to bring what he has promised here in his word, what he has said, the blessings, the blessings of first fruit, he, 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 you, he, he invokes it, it invokes and provokes it, and God releases it upon you, so that he, so even when others are saying there's a casting down, you will be saying there's a lifting up, and this is a secret of making it in life, and making it big, being successful in the year, in whatever business you are doing, in your business that you're doing, in the work of your hands, your career, this is a secret, a key secret that the Israelites have used for years to, to, to tap into the heavenly realm and command divine blessings or divine favor to rest on, the, uh, on their businesses, on the work of your hands. And they are so successful that people began to envy them. <laughs> you don't envy, you don't envy what you don't understand. You, you can look at the same thing, uh, like if you look at uh, Genesis 26, there was famine in the land and Isaac, the son of the prophet Abraham, and Isaac wanted to leave the land and go to Egypt again. And the Lord came and said, no, don't go to Egypt because of hardship, economic uh, stagnation, economic challenges, economic, economic problems, poverty, hardship. And the Lord said, don't go to, to, to Egypt. Say, remain in the land and sow in the land. Remain in where I ask you to remain and sow in the land. And when he sowed according to God's word, in obedience to God's word, he began to prosper and prosper and prosper till he became very prosperous. This is the word of God. And the enemies, the Philistines, began to envy him. So envy always comes when God has begun to prosper you. They don't know when you were sowing. These people are not aware when you were sowing. In fact, when you try to sow into God's project, God's work, God's ministry, these people will fight you. They will talk you down. They will tell you you're a fool. But <laughs> they try to tell people that way. But these people themselves, they sacrifice to idols. Big time. Very big time. They give big, big sacrifices unto idols, unto demons. But they always out there, Satan wants to use them to discourage believers. From planting seeds, sowing in the kingdom, in kingdom projects. And when you but when you take care of God's projects, when you take care of God's kingdom projects, God makes sure that your own projects are well taken care of. That is how it works. God makes sure that that's what? That your projects are well taken care of by his angels. He commands his angels, who are the doers of his word, to make sure, watch this one, make sure this one is well taken care of for the year. Make sure this one receives the packages, the heavenly packages, blessings that are due to this one. Because this one has obeyed my voice. Hallelujah. Amen. The blessings are in obedience. Hallelujah. So let's look, take a look at uh, Leviticus 23, verse 10 to 11. Leviticus 23, verse 10 to 11. And I read. It says, speak to the children of Israel. This is what the Lord is saying. So speak to the children of Israel. Speak to God's people. And say to them, when you come into the land, which is this new year, when you come into the land which I give to you, and reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. You can see that you shall bring a sheaf, a sheaf. It didn't say you shall bring all the first fruits. 
like some bleach. No, no, no. You should bring a sheaf, a good sheaf. Of the first fruits, take the best, good part of your income. Of the first fruits, your first income of the year. Of your harvest, to the priest, to the man of God. To the man of God. And he, the man of God, he shall wave the sheep. He shall wave your income. He shall wave your seed. Your first fruit. He shall wave it before the Lord. He shall hallow the name of the Lord. He shall call upon the name of the Most High. He shall call upon the great and awesome name of the Most High that dwells in heaven and earth. And offer it to him. And glorify him. And I shall use it for ministry purpose. For the work of ministry. And that will provoke the holy angels of heaven, of favor, angels of divine supply, angels of divine blessings, angels of divine favors, uh, angels of divine protection to descend forth to bless you, angels of blessings to descend forth and bless you because you have obeyed the voice of God and you have done what God said you should do for you to, you know, release the blessings of the year. First fruit releases the blessings of the year. First fruit opens the heavens for, your, for, for, for blessings of the year. To release, to pour for the blessings of the year upon your life. Many believers go through hard times through the years, the year, because they never observe this mystery of the first fruit. They never observe it. So they go through hard times. If you're one who observes this from year to year, you will never go through challenges. All that's may be crying, there's a casting down, there's difficulty, there's challenges, there's hardship. But God who can make a way where there seems to be no way will make a way for you by his divine power. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Many who have tried this and are using these techniques, they have never cried. They have never cried. When others are crying, there's hardship, there's problem. Oh, what kind of a business year is this? This year is bad for business. Oh, those ones are saying, these ones who practice this word, this truth of God, say, wow, this year is so, is so amazing. This year is, is, is beautiful. This year is glorious. This year is wonderful. This year, great wealth, blessings are pouring in. This year is a, it's a mega success for me. And that will be your portion as you follow this instruction. It will be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm. It's a here. Let me take again Leviticus 23, verse 10 to 11. Well, I'm looking at verse 11 again. The he, the priest, after you've taken your first fruits, a good chunk, a good part of your first income for the year, you take it to the priest, take it to the man of God, and then he shall, the man of God, he shall, he shall, he shall wave the sheep, your income, your first fruit. He shall wave it before the Lord. To be accepted on your behalf, on your behalf. You are not the one to offer it to God. You take it to the man of God. There's a difference between a man of God and a child of God. One is anointed to serve in the altar of God. <laughs> one is anointed to do certain things that the other one cannot do. We are all children of God. Yes, we are all anointed. But a man of God carries the Dharma gifts and is ordained to do certain, certain specific tasks in the house of God, in the temple of God. And if you're not the one commanded to do so, you don't do it. That amounts to you trying to please God or serve God in your own way. There are many people today who try to serve God their own way. And these ones who worship what they don't know. They don't worship God because they are worshiping God in disobedience. And you cannot worship God in disobedience. He said, you shall take it to the man of God, and he shall wave it before God, offer it unto God, glorify the name, hallow the name of the Lord God on your behalf. That's what the word of God says here. He shall wave the sheep before the Lord, before Yahweh Elohim, to be accepted on your behalf, on your behalf. He will do it. The man of God will do it. Not you. The man of God will do it. Not you. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Hallelujah. Amen. So he will wave it before God. And when he wave it before God, <laughs> that it will be accepted by God and God will command his angels to bring for the blessings of the year. Abundance of blessings. And make sure that no matter how difficult the year is, there is a way for you out. And there are blessings that will come and locate you that year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, and you shall offer on that day, when you wave the sheep, a male lamb on the first year without blemish, as a bond offering unto the Lord. So you shall thank God. You should give God thanksgiving for the year. It is your thanksgiving for the year. It is your faith being put to work. 
to appreciate God for what he has done for you the previous year and to appreciate God for the new year and the heavenly blessings that are packaged to come and pour forth upon your life super abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 When we look at, uh, we look at uh, Proverbs 3 verse 9. Let's take a look at Proverbs 3 verse 9. Because when you do this, you are honoring God. You are honoring God with your substance. You are honoring God with what you have in your hands. Which is what God actually owns. And just gave to you to use. And this our temporary life on the earth. We are sojourners on the earth. The earth belongs to God. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and all his fullness. For he has founded it upon the waters. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything in the world belongs to God. Your money, what you call your money belongs to God. What you call your car belongs to God. What you call your house, your mansion, your mansion, duplex, your children belong to God. And if God sees that you are the type that's, that is proud, disobedient, dishonoring to him with what he has done for you, you're acting that way, it only invokes causes. And demons begin to attack such person and destroy everything the person has. And the person runs into losses. That was the problem of Cain. And Cain became cursed. But when you were the type that, that has a good heart that honors God, blessings are bound in your life. Look at Solomon. He took 1,000 rams. And in our, in our money here, there's about 70 million bucks. That's what he offered. The little boy, the young boy, offered unto God. How many today can honor God that way from their substance, from their resources, from their pockets, from their bank accounts? 70 million bucks offered to God. And that night was the first time that God appeared to him in his dream and said, Solomon, Shilomon, he said, ask of whatever you want and it is done. You see, many of us are the reason why God is not blessing us because we are not obeying what God says. Under the guise of grace, we live in, 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 in abject disobedience Severe disobedience unto God and expect the blessings that comes with obedience through grace to abound in our lives. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Hallelujah. So let me see. Let me show you. When you honor God this way, what happens to your life? What is the blessing of honoring God with your first fruits? What, what is the blessing? You must give God first. You must give God first. Before Christ could bless the, the, the people who were hungry in the desert and, and released and released and made a miracle, performed the miracle that fed uh, 5,000 and then 7,000 people. He took what was theirs first. He took the food that belongs to the lad. He took it from the hands. He said, bring it to me first. And they gave it to him first. Before Elijah could bless and walk the miracle that changed the life and, and sustained and blessed the widow of Zarephath, he took from the woman first. It is God's principle. And your first fruit is God's command for the year. When you abide in it, you obey it, you have provoked the heavens to rain down blessings, abundance of blessings for you for that year. Do you not go through hard times, difficult times in your business, in your finances, and the rest of them? You will not go through them. But those who don't obey these words, they often go into these problems without them knowing why demons are allowed to cause problems in their finances and cause issues for them and difficulties, hard times, economic challenges, uh, a lot of nonsense happen in your lives. So what are the blessings of honoring God with your, your wealth, with your first fruits? I want to read Proverbs chapter, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 9. Proverbs 3, verse number 9 to 10. And it says, Honor the Lord. It says, Honor the Lord with your possessions. Honor the Lord with your possessions. Can you see that? With your money, with your income, with whatever God has blessed you with. Honor the Lord. Honor Yahweh. Honor Jehovah. Honor the Lord Jesus Christ with your possessions and with the first fruits of your all your increase. All your increase. As God is blessing you one after the other, step after the other, make sure you only you bring a package, a package. Take something from there. And so back to his kingdom. So back for kingdom projects. A man of God, take. Offer this to the Lord before me on my behalf. Offer it. Thank the Lord for me. Pray on my behalf. And let more blessings be released unto me. Many people, they eat all the fruits that they are given. And when you eat all your fruits, 
You didn't plant anyone. You didn't sow anyone. How do you expect to, to have a harvest for the next year? This is what is going on in the lives of many believers. And then they pray and pray and pray on empty foundation. You pray on empty foundation. Prayers doesn't work without the right foundation. You must have the right foundation. And that right foundation of obedience to what God has said. And when you now pray, then you, the grace of God, the power of God, will move mightily. The blessings in that obedience to that God's word is released upon you. Because you have the right foundation. Obedience to God's word. Hallelujah. Prayers on the foundation of disobedience is nonsense. It doesn't work. So that's why you need to pray and then ask for God's mercy after you've obeyed the voice of God. That's why obeying what God has said for your increase in any way, your healing, your health, your prosperity, obeying those specific instructions will do you great favor, great good instead of disobeying it. God created the world and he knows the keys for you to make it in life, not you. Anything you're trying to do is guesswork. Any projects, any business, whatever you're trying to do is guesswork. But God owns the keys. He has the keys. He knows how to handle it. He knows how to give you a breakthrough, increase, and transfer the wealth of the nations to your hands. When you follow his instruction, when you show that you fear him and you honor him with your possessions. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions. Proverbs 3 verse 9. Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10. You honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. All, not just one. All, as God is increasing you. Continue, con be consistent in your honoring God with your first fruits. Be consistent in your giving unto God. Be consistent in your sowing unto God. Be consistent in honoring God with your possessions. From your income, with your finances. Not with your mouth only and say, Father, I love you. Father, you are glorious. My Father, my God, all I have to say is thank you. Bullshit. That's nonsense. Uh, that is somebody who's praying out of, out of ignorance. Out of ignorance. Praise and thanksgiving, obedience unto God, sacrifice and prayers, they all go together. They work together. You cannot leave one, do one and leave the other one. Just like in Matthew 25, 25, our Lord Jesus Christ said, do it all, do it all, do it all. Don't do this and leave this one apart and expect to get all the blessings. No. <laughs> the Beatitudes, when you read Matthew 5, in the Beatitudes, you see that there's blessing for every obedience that you obey God. There is blessing for every specific command of God that is given for, unto you. There are separate blessings. So the one you obey is the blessings you, you invoke and receive. If you fail to obey in this area, you can never get the blessings that comes from there. And to get great wealth, great increase, for it to be well with you for the year, financially and otherwise, the Lord has spoken about first fruits. For if the first fruit is holy, so shall the rest of them be holy for the year, unto the year. And Satan cannot touch your finances because it has been declared holy for the year. So Satan, demons cannot tamper with your business, cannot tamper with your job, cannot tamper with your career, because you have already made it holy before God. But if you eat God's first fruits, now you shall be, oh, <laughs> now you shall be, you are the one that knows. <laughs> Nobody will tell you what you experience will let you understand. For the rest of the year, what you go through will make you understand who is wise, you or God. You will know. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So verse 10, what does it say? When you honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all your increase, what happens? What are the blessings? The Bible says in verse 10, verse 10 says, verse 10, three, uh, Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10, verse 10 now lists and, uh, and writes out, spells out the blessings that follows it. It says, so your bands, meaning your bank accounts, your bank accounts, your income, your bank account. He said, when you do this, you honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits. You can see it with the first fruits. Of all your increase, you can see first fruit is repeated in this scripture again, and with the first fruits of all your increase, just so your bands, your bank accounts, your income, your pockets will be filled with plenty. This is how to fill your pockets with plenty for the year. Your first fruits, honoring God with your first fruits, and your vats will overflow with new wine. What does this mean? That you will smile, you will rejoice. There will be reason for you to shout hallelujah and praise God and say, oh, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. Oh, blessings, blessings, glory, glory, hallelujah. This is lovely, this is wonderful, glory, 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 hallelujah. I am so blessed. This year has brought blessings, 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 increase to me. Oh, others may be saying there's a casting down, things are 
are tight, things are difficult, but you will be saying there is a lifting up. This is lovely. This is a lovely year. I don't know about what you people are saying, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a year of blessings. It's a year of glory. I am blessed. Oh, everything is working for my good. I am happy. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's a year of mega blessings. I thank God. I thank God. And this is the way you've been shouting and singing. Hallelujah unto God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, when you follow these instructions, the blessings that are bound in first fruits, giving your first fruits unto God, are bound in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. But well, this is Prophet Ben Ujenabo, uh, God's servant here, giving you the word of truth, the word of life, God's word for your increase, for your blessings this year. To him that has ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And you say you want to sow, you say, man of God, I want to I want to give my first fruits. Feel free to do that. You can inbox me, you can use uh, or get uh, contact me on WhatsApp uh, 234 plus 234 internationally plus 234 706 plus 234-706-490 five four zero zero you can add me on whatsapp and i'm going to speak to you and give you the guidance god bless you god bless you god bless you for those who have the details uh well you feel led to give your first fruits of the year those of us um, partners abroad those of us uh, partners and followers abroad you want to give your first fruit endeavor to do so and as you do so i pray for you by the power of the holy ghost let the heavens open for you this year and rain down abundance of blessings, financial increase. Let the angels of blessings, financial blessings, financial release, financial favors, increase, favors, otherwise favors, blessings, provisions. Malak, Elohim, El Shaddai, angels of the Lord God, Jehovah Jireh, locate you, bless you, prosper you this year. In the name of Jesus, right? deliver you from all evil. It deliver your business, your job from all evil. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you once more. My name is Prophet Bernard Genevo. Thank you for hearing God's word today. Thank you for receiving God's word and, and coming online, looking at our channel and receiving God's word. May you be blessed as you receive God's word in the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you. It is well with you. Touch the screen and connect. It is well with you. God bless you as you follow this instruction. May your first fruit open your heavens and bring blessings, 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 blessings. May your seeds your soul, that you sow in the kingdom of God or kingdom projects be, bring blessings, open heavens for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This year you shall succeed. You shall not lose. You shall not fall. Downfall is not your portion. Success shall crack all your undertakings by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeshua Messiah. Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.